So please welcome him with a huge round of applause. The one and the only, MS Dhoni. How are you? Whistle podu. Whistle podu indeed. Here's the thing. I'm sure you've noticed this that every time you come for an event, there's a standing ovation like this. It's um, you are referred to very often as a as a legend. Aapki umar kya hai? How could you be called a legend? How does that feel? That's a priceless feeling in itself, isn't it? Well, it feels very old to start off <coughs> because uh, to be called a legend, first of all, I don't believe I'm a legend. Uh, but to be called a legend, which means you have spent a lot of time on the field, on the field, whether depending on whichever stream you come from, whether you are from Bollywood, whether you are from cricket or any other sport. Or business, banking, any sector. So, I definitely feel old. <clears throat> That's one thing. Uh, but more than that, what what I feel is the connect that I have with the people. And uh, I think most of you would have played cricket at some point of time. And the reason why people connect with me is because the way I play cricket is how they play cricket. You know, it's not like. Paji, Sachin Tendulkar playing cricket, where you see him and you're like, I can't play like that. You know, they see me play and they're like, ऐसे तो हम भी खेलते हैं. You know, on the gully, on the ground, we have played like that. You know, he, he doesn't have an orthodox way of playing. You know, he's somebody who hits the ball everywhere, and he has a lot of fun on the field. So, I feel that's what my greatest strength has been. It's it's not about being a legend. I was uh, fortunate uh, when I was leading a team. I had a very uh, experience team with me and you know it makes the job a lot easier so it's not about being the legend for me it was all about connecting with the people and making sure that the indian cricket team you know we as a team we perform to the potential that we have you just spoke of connect uh, there's a survey where the results revealed that you are the second most admired man in india Taliyan ho jaye. That is a big deal. Second, second to whom? Second to our prime minister. Well, I think uh, I can stand in election now. Uh, I, 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 I don't think वो दिन दूर नहीं है. मुझे लगता है ये भी possible है. No, it's 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 a very because tough job. Because you are you are for the people. You are loved by the people. Yeah, And but uh, I'm more of the. Army guy, you know, than a than a politician. You know, I love spending time with the army. I'm pretty much straightforward. Uh, politics is, you know, I I think if I ever want to get into politics, I'll have to really study a lot. You know, do a lot of changes, and you know, then maybe I'll be able to adapt. Uh, but you know, it's it's a big thing to be admired by so many people, and. You know, thanks to cricket. If I was not playing cricket, don't I don't think you know there'll be so many people who'd be admiring me. And a lot of times, uh, people say, "Oh, you are very lucky." You know, I love when people say that, and I just tell them, you know, it's not like I am lucky. Just that the number of people I meet and the connect that I have with the people, they are the ones who pray for me. You know, and that's why I'm so lucky. It's not like you know I, I was born lucky, but over the years it has happened that, you know. Whenever there's a fifty-fifty scenario, more often than not, you know, it turns in in the favor of us. You know, whether it's me as an individual or as a team. So, you know, being lucky is important, but at the same time, I think uh, the admiration and uh, it's something you know, uh, you know, you you feel a lot more satisfied looking at you know the kind of ovation you get wherever you go and the kind of love and affection that people show towards you. We we'll talk about luck in just a minute, but I'm going to make a prediction here. It's it is going to happen. I see it. M S Dhoni, Prime Minister of the country, couple of years from now, that is a possibility. I really believe. I really believe. And then when this happens, you said Mandira Bedi predicted it. Okay, sitting on <laughs> stage talking to Dhoni. But I think that's more pressure than you know uh, trying to win a World Cup. You don't take pressure. Imagine, imagine, especially with the banking sector and everyone. Oh, the GDP is going down. You know, the financial deficit is happening. <laughs> export, import, all that thing. So it's a, it's a. Uh, I personally feel uh, the job 
of a politician, whether it's a minister or a state politician. I'm not talking about you. I'm going to go further. It's a very tough job. You know, we all love criticizing uh, <laughs> politicians, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, we are a big country. The number of people that in itself is a big challenge. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, local trains or buses or roads, but we are just too big and it will take time, you know, for okay. us to... Uh, become what some of the other countries are but I always felt till your intention is right and you're moving forward thinking that this is what is good for the country or the state you know it, that is the right decision for that make. you need a change maker and someone who stays cool and calm under pressure just saying but as captain as leader uh, we've seen a World Cup win we've seen a T20 World Cup win we've seen India uh, at number one, ranked at number one for 18 months in the test format. So you've given our country many, many, many priceless moments. A big round of applause for that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But what would you say is your priceless moment as far as your, the cricketing career is concerned? A, as captain and B, as player. Well, the answer would be very different. You know, a lot of people would be expecting, okay, this is something that he would pick, that is something that he would pick. But uh, the two special moments, uh, first I would say it was just after the 2007 T20 World Cup, we landed in Mumbai. So for a lot of us, we were part of the team that went to England. And from England, we got selected and we went to South Africa for the T20 World Cup. So we won, we were coming back and that day it was very cloudy and you know, it was raining. So it, we started our descent, we were about to land and I look outside I'm like, you know what, it's raining, there would be nobody to receive us, we shall book all our flights and we'll go back to our respective cities because we have been out for so long. So we land and even before immigration, there were like loads of people to receive us yes. and I still remember. We were in a double-decker bus. It was I an open-top no bus. No one can forget that experience. Raining, cloudy. Yes, and it took us literally five hours from the airport to the Wankhede Stadium. We all got wet. We were in the bus. We dried up somehow. We again got wet because in between again it was raining. So it happened like twice or thrice. And then the most memorable moment came. So what is called the Queen's Necklace? We are right in the center. There are people all around. There are cars parked all around. There are people on the street. You look ahead, there are thousands of people. You look behind, there's thousands of people. And everybody had a smile on their face. None of them were sitting in the car. All of them were outside. They were having their cameras. They had that smile. They were clicking pictures. I don't know how many of them actually missed their flights or were very late for work. It was not late, it would have been very late for work, but that's, that's what it meant to them. You know, we were thinking, okay, we'll go back home. And then the kind of response we got, and also we don't really have anything to compare it to. Because 2011 we won, but there was no celebration like that. Like this. Because we never went out, nothing really happened. Even the time when we won, we were in the stadium till 1, 1 1.30 and we actually, like I personally actually didn't see the people celebrate on the street. Whatever we saw was on television. So, you know, that was a very memorable moment. The second would be, it was during the 2011 World Cup, it was during the finals. We were uh, sitting in, uh, not sitting, we were playing at Wankhe and it was like 10 or 15 runs were needed. And me and Yuvraj, we were batting. And all of a sudden, the crowd, they start singing the song, Vande Matram. Oh, my and, God, that gives me goose flesh. The and you're right in the middle and imagine 35, 40,000 people, you know, saying Vande Matram. And so it used to start from, let's say, if it started from North Stand, your ears actually move because it goes around. So that would be my second most memorable moment or one or two, you know, I can't really stack it saying this was the preferred moment but it was something that was very very special and I don't know if I would ever be able to witness something like that because you may have 40,000 people uh, singing the national anthem or singing the national song but that atmosphere, the, the moment, uh, the hard work that was put for that 45-50 days you know, during the World Cup, whether it will come or not, 
you know so uh, i feel these are the two priceless moment uh, when it comes to my cricketing career and there have been lots of other moments but uh, these two i think were very very priceless you know to me you are a very um, country proud man and the fact that you've joined the army and what does playing for india mean to you and also leading india it's two different things it's it's one to get that blue jersey and then to lead that team of blue well leading india was like a I won't even say a dream because I never thought I'll play for India. If you can't play for India, how can you ever dream of, you know, leading the Indian cricket sure. team? So that was like, you know, everything has a radar. It was beyond the radar. So let's not even talk about it. <laughs> uh, but playing for the country, uh, again, I was somebody who lived in the present. You know, I was very much about what I'm supposed to do now, what I'm supposed to do the next day or the coming days. So to me, playing cricket was very important whether i played for my school team or my district or my state or my zone so i always kept things very simple so finally when i got a chance you know all of a sudden you start to figure out what really is happening and the good thing with cricketers or the bad thing with cricketers or sports people is first of all we get a chance which is a good thing we get a chance to represent the country sure you know but the only problem is you can only represent the country for a period of time it may be 3 years it may be 5 years it may be 15 years so you know once you have finished your cricketing career or sports career you can no longer represent your country unless you start doing something else you know which happens to be on that line so for us the for me personally the the most important thing is whenever i am going out representing my country i want to give it my best shot you know it's not about the expectation that uh, others have from me for me it's all about what good i can do how well i can contribute and you you take keep uh, you keep taking it forward yeah. once you are if you make your debut you are different once you reach a stage where your career is ending then it's not only about your performance you have to make sure that others who are part of the team the youngsters they get the right guidance so that they are the ones who will take care of the future of cricket or sports so there are other kind of responsibilities that fall uh, in front of you but overall i always felt country was the uh, the biggest uh, motivation for me it was never uh, about scoring runs or taking wickets you know it, it was more about the team should do well and we should win the games and that always helped because it kept things very simple you know once you start getting into the groove of i want to score runs i want to take wickets i want to do this i want we play a team sport so for us it's always about you know all of us moving together and you know what is something that you can do but maybe some of the others can't do to realize all of that and then to move forward taking that added responsibility that's what makes you you know slightly special because you can always think about what is good for you but what is good for the team and then you keep moving forward with that decision is something that will make you that will make people appreciate you especially the ones who are part of the team so you just spoke of youngsters i mean what advice would you give a youngster today who is getting into um into cricket or sport any kind of competitive sport maybe the youngsters today the only piece of advice uh, i would give them which was very relevant when i made my debut or people in the 80s played cricket is the core you take care of cricket everything else will yes, take yes. care of itself so this is you your social media i follow you on instagram is has got a lot lots of videos and lots of images of your beautiful little daughter tell us or share with us a, one of the most priceless moments that you you've had with her i think my i mean there are plenty because most <laughs> most of his feed is ziva ziva and him what is the main, what does the name mean uh, it's a hebrew name basically it means light okay. so she is the light of your life clearly yes and we picked it from a serial you know there used to be a serial called ncis i don't know how many of you watched it there was a character named ziva in that i i somehow always liked small names you know which are not very heavy not but then i realized ziva singh dhoni becomes a very heavy name you know when you put all the things together but anyways that was done so my most priceless moment with ziva was i missed her birth i was busy with the 2015 world cup my wife still curses me she is like okay you know when she grows up i will tell her that uh, your father was not there when she was born when you were born so 
uh, I think the most priceless moment was after the World Cup when we came back uh, and Sakshi and Ziva, they were still in Delhi at that point of time, Gurgaon. And the first time I saw her, I picked her up and she must be two months or one and a half months and she made a lot of noise. That was the first time she was seeing me. I don't know whether she saw me or not because they say as a as a kid who's one month, two months, they don't, they can't really the, see yeah, long. Yeah, their vision isn't developed. But for the full five minutes, she was making noise, she was giggling and she was like, she has never done it. I don't know why she's doing it. She even had problem with that. Why is she doing it? <laughs> why she never First you're not there. Me? Now she's yes. come. Why is she responding to you like this? Yeah, <laughs> so I think that was a priceless moment because whatever said and done, that first time when you see your newborn, you know, something happens which is very difficult to describe in word. And from that till now, she's four and a half and every, every time she comes in and she has a... a new question or answer and the latest is uh, you know when when you ask Lee, okay why do you love papa ah oh, papa is money oh, wow. i don't know who taught her but <laughs> she's straight for she's like why do you love papa oh because papa is money <laughs> but but that's how today's kids are you know i i remember when i was growing up if my father is in that room i would be in some other room and if my father is speaking, you will always keep quiet. And, but I think that was the last generation. The coming generation is more of the type, you know, where the son or the daughter, once they turn 18 or 20 or 21, whatever the legal age is, they'll be like, Dad, come, let's go for a drink. So that's where the future is heading. And it will be very strange when all of a sudden the father says, Beta, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can give me company. You have a soda, you know, I'll drink beer. <laughs> So, okay, tell me this, what is the most important thing that success has taught you? Success tells you, teaches you to be humble in life. Um, I felt No, it doesn't teach everybody. It, it's wonderful and I'm sure all of you will agree with me that he, is, he has so much humility and he's such a humble person in spite of uh, achieving so much. What you have learnt is humility. Not everybody has that kind of humility after no, I'll, success. I'll, I'll tell you. As human beings, we are the most complex creatures. German Shepherd. Maybe there are five of us who have German Shepherd. Usually their characters are quite the same. You, know, you may have a lab. Labs are quite the same. We are the only person where two siblings born as twins will have very different characters. Mm. You know, we study the same syllabus in school. CBSC mein padhai ki hai, ye, 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 hai, courses hai. But what happens? Exam hota hai, same teacher padha hai, sab kuch. But the results are very different. Yes. So, why cricket is so close to life is you score a hundred today and the very next game you get out on a zero. Mm. So I personally always say cricket is a great level. It Level levels you out. Sure. You know, you start flying high, it brings you down. And the thing it's more of a mental game than a physical game. You know, it's the mind that is much more stronger. And these are the things that you keep teaching the youngsters. Even if they are not a sports person, that sure. if you are able to control your mind, you can actually do a lot of things better in life. Because mind is the most powerful thing. We all think it's a physical, it's a physical, I am tired, I can't run more. It's the mind that is telling the body you can't run more. That's right. So, what cricket teaches you is to be humble in life. Or I would say the syllabus that is covered by cricket. Of course, there are individuals who will pick what they want to pick. Mm. It is glamorous. Yes, it is glamorous. To be humble is more important to be part of the glamour. Sure. So, the small, small thing, the hard work, the discipline, you know, the honesty. Okay, you've heard this Captain Cool title about two million times. How cool are you at home? What does family mean to you? <laughs> are no, you def like... Def definitely, I'm not that cool because... Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and like how much do you think you've changed after becoming a husband, after becoming a parent? Well, once the number of matches came down, because once you are playing for the country, you need to follow a certain protocol as to what works for you and how you are able to perform. And it's not like once you get married, all of a sudden you can change that procedure. So when I'm playing cricket, I'm still the same, what I was you know, before 2010. But over the years, what has happened is now, whenever you get some free time, you want to go back home. You want your wife to be there. You want your daughter to be there. You want to spend time with your parents. You know, often when you are in the process of, you know, securing your future, often you neglect the fact that 
your mom your dad also spent a lot of time doing what you are doing right now right so this in turn is the time when they want to spend time with you so it becomes very critical how to balance you know how to do that because one of the facts of life is our parents work really hard for us yes. we are working very hard for our future yes we don't know whether my son or my daughter how well they'll do in life if i am doing well why not put that extra 15 20% and try to make it you know even more secure for them so you have to always try and balance it out are you going to write a book there are lots of books on you but are you going to write your own no. autobiography at any point I, i live in the present so usually i forget what has happened in the past that's so a good way to especially live especially to get to a lot of things acha pakistan match ke pehle kya mood tha so now to fiction mein chala jata hai you say okay whatever is the right thing you know just write a fiction oh i was under pressure you know i was not sure and especially before your beginnings let's say i scored a 148 i was like you know i was not sure i was very down i was very out i couldn't sleep the whole night i got up early in the morning i said okay i'll go to the gym so wo story likhte chali jao and you know it will become a hit because that's what book is supposed to do it is supposed to make your life look so difficult that others will be like yeah yeah he has worked really hard in life so you are a good multitasker because you're focused you're multifaceted also because uh, you recently took part in or performed for the mastercard um, campaign priceless campaign you shot in simla yeah dialogue bolte hain wow we had a very good director mera performance acha nahi raha matlab director acha nahi tha so it's not my headache the ये तो नहीं डायरेक्टर्स अच्छे अच्छे होते हैं पर प्रॉब्लम ये है कि जो सामने वाला होता है वो परफॉर्म नहीं करता कभी कभी और आपने परफॉर्म आपने जैसे भी रिपीट किया जैसे भी किया अच्छा किया एक बार सबको सुना दो वो लाइन वो चटनी वाली लाइन नहीं मैं तो भूल भी गया चटनी वाली लाइन इट्स इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिमेम्बर लाइन्स यू नो एंड स्पेशली वेन यू आर वर्किंग विथ अदर्स आई ऑलवेज ए डायरेक्टर जो बोलेगा मैं वो करूँगा इफ इट्स नॉट गुड इट्स द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द डायरेक्टर नॉट मी ओके All right now we've seen you wield the bat and wield it so successfully we'd like for you to wield another wooden equipment before we move forward see we are very multifaceted over here okay i'll tell you this must be from the instagram so basically there's a story behind it i can't play this thing i'll tell you what happened so shikhar was learning at that point of time so he used to travel with the basuri so uske paas do the so i took one you know which side is correct yeah that much i know <laughs> okay so basically i was holding it like that shikhar was playing on my left i was not playing it shikhar was playing it i was just doing my part you were not even, like ha huh, so that you, much i was doing you were convincing enough to like Yes. Make some fun some people. <laughs> okay, now I have a very quick um, rapid fire. I'm ready. Okay. First thing that comes to mind, yeah? What is it that money can't buy? Love. What do you not want more of? Bikes. <laughs> Honest confession. What is your most priceless gift that you've ever received? I'm waiting for the gift. <laughs> Hasn't come yet. No, because once you said it, then people won't give you any more gifts. No, but then you can always keep raising the bar, na? I'm, I'm still to, waiting. Which to badiya mila hoga priceless. I'll give you a hint. My daughter. No. Okay. No. It's not a gift, na? Huh? It was hard work. <laughs> and i'm i'm still working for that so okay my most priceless possession has to be my collection of bikes back to the bikes okay yeah which my mother and my wife and my sister call scrap oh okay one secret no one knows about you <laughs> that's why it's a secret nobody knows about but now is the time to share it come on no, no then it's no more a secret okay fine Which describes you better, Captain Cool or Helicopter Dhoni? I think Captain Cool is people call me that more often than Helicopter Dhoni. That's the first time I've heard it. Okay, helicopter Dhoni. That's because I made it up. <laughs> All right, three things on your bucket list. 
skydiving on my own not I've tandem i've done buddy also well, that's not counted you're right not tandem on your tandem own. is yeah. like yeah. i've yeah. done static line jump so tandem after that is like a demotion not a promotion okay so that that's will one. be one uh flying in a fighter plane flying in or flying a in, in. because i know i can't fly a it's never too because late it's never say never no first of all you can you can learn how to fly yes second you can fly a commercial plane ye fighter plane kahan se utha ke launga main aap you are, you have friends in higher places yeah not for a fighter plane okay for a commercial jet maybe yes but third i have not decided i don't know what that third will be something underwater no no, no i don't know how to swim so definitely oh, right. i am not okay going underwater what is the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning switch off the alarm <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> because i always get up with an alarm irrespective whether i'm working or i'm not working it's an alarm good morning favorite movie dialogue well amitab ki koi bhi dialogues you know ek suna do na sabko don ka intezar to 11 mulkon ki police kar rahi hai par don ko pakadna mushkil hi nahi namumkin hai beautiful <laughs> most priceless relationship I think with my mother. Beautiful. Most priceless conversation ever that you'll never forget. <laughs> I've forgotten so I don't think I have a conversation like that. <laughs> Nobody's picked your brain like that. Okay. Most priceless decision ever taken. Well, people say it's giving Joginder Sharma the last over in T20 World Cup. But I don't think it was a very <laughs> difficult decision. But people compliment me for that most uh, fearful moment jumping out of the aircraft for the first time what is the best compliment you've ever received i can act that you can act yeah i mean you got it right now in the tvc yeah i, I gave it to you pehle bhi mil chuka hai okay your weirdest fan moment imagine <laughs> we were sitting in the bus i am usually in the last seat and dada is like ms wo teri fan hai yaar at least say a hello na I like okay. I went down. She came and she hugged me. So my hands were. I am like. Uh. Okay. Um, what are you not good at? Maths. And by maths, I don't mean plus, minus, multiply, divide, trigonometry, all of that. I am not good at. Oh. Okay. Because that time I was playing cricket, so I have no clue about it. What is the one thing that you'd like to change about yourself? I'm very bad with the phone. Very bad with the phone. Phone. as in i can't talk on the phone usually i leave it it's on silent somebody sends me a message i send the message or reply back after one day two days or at time i just forget so that's something i would definitely like to change so uh, your communication skills no no my communication skills are good my communication skill why are the phone is bad <laughs> last question of the rapid fire that priceless moment that gave you your first gray hair do you remember it <laughs> <laughs> i think it started very early in our career you know because every game that you play when it comes to cricket it may be your last game you know so like my fifth game was almost my last game people say different things about it but i had not scored in the first four games the fifth game after the game there was a selection meeting that was held so there's 99% chances coming from bihar jharkhand which was not very well known uh, for cricket if i had not scored in that game i think 90% i would have been kicked out of the team which people say no no that's where your have. first gray hair came i think probably so. yeah i think it's a good thing to have or get gray hair because it shows that you think about certain things in life you do get stressed about things in life but the amount of gray hair and beard that i have got uh, i think if i don't color my hair i'll be like amitabh bachan that's how gray i am you know so Really? Yes. At thirty nine. See, that's one secret that he's just shared with us. No, no See, this I have shared with a lot of people. You have. Big round of applause. M S Dhoni, always straight from the heart, very focused, and a multitasker as well.